Hey, what's going on everyone? This is Mitch. Good Wednesday evening to you all. Hope you guys are doing well out there and are having yourselves a great ending to your day and a great week so far. I don't know, for me personally, seems like the week is flying by, which is uh, good news for me at least, but of course not for everybody whose week may be dragging by. But regardless, hope you guys are doing well out there. Not going to keep you long this evening, and I appreciate you folks joining me this evening. Uh, but we're going to give you some updated information on the severe weather event for tomorrow. To Tomorrow can be kind of tricky. It just depends on when the energy, these little pulses of energy, what kind of timing do we have? How much morning convection cloudiness will affect the setup for later in the afternoon, in the evening? A couple things to figure out, and I'll try to explain it the best way I can. A lot of people have brought up some really good ideas about, you know, just making some videos in the summertime, just trying to explain some of these weather terms like kinematics, thermodynamics, even soundings like in wintertime, severe weather season. And hopefully I can I can do that sometime um, this this summer. Typically I, I kind of shy away from that just because I'm certainly not a teacher by any means, so I, I want to certainly present things in a way that you guys can understand and not kind of a, a, in a sloppy way, if that means any means anything. I've certainly have gotten a lot better with my speaking since starting this YouTube page. If you guys go all the way up to out to my earlier videos, I, I did um a lot, and I still do. I, I, I say um a good bit, but not near as much as I used to. Uh, but anyways, we'll see what happens with that. Certainly got some ideas tossed around in my head for the summertime as we enter some slower periods. But appreciate the support. Really do. And let's try to figure out what's going to happen for tomorrow. If you guys have not subscribed, certainly consider doing that. Like the video if you like it. It helps get these videos out there. And if you guys got anything that I can pray about or, or pray over, please put it in the comments below so I can do that. I can pray over it and so others can do so too and you know if you guys got anything that y'all just want to talk about and just reach out um you know it doesn't necessarily have to be a prayer request or anything if you just need somebody to talk to reach out to me on twitter facebook i'm here for you it's it's slower now so i, I can spend a little bit more time with you guys in the comments be a little bit more detailed with y'all and uh, a little bit more detail in the messages sometimes when the weather's crazy i feel bad i feel like i leave some people hanging in the comments and just not as detailed as i would like to be but it's slow so hit me up anything doesn't have to be about weather but regardless let's get rolling here uh beautiful satellite loop out here um you got the the remnants of this low pressure that continues to spin uh tomorrow will be another day of some showers thunder showers isolated hail in some of these showers in the northeast we'll kind of give you another update on that here in the morning and then we have a southwest flow in response to this spinning mid upper level low that is very visible on satellite out here off the coast of California. And this is helping to bring kind of a southwesterly flow. So what's going to happen is, is a piece of energy, which is already kind of doing so. There's a little bit of an oomph to the atmosphere, if you will, already promoting some thunderstorm development in New Mexico and areas of western Texas and central Texas. Not not much in Texas right now, but you can see some thunderstorm and convective development ongoing right here in the southwest states and areas of Colorado and the panhandle of Oklahoma. Uh, but tomorrow will be a bigger day. We'll have a piece of energy that, that kind of swings through this, this area right in here sometime in the morning. And in this general way, uh, what, what kind of morning cloudiness or convection do you have in this region in the morning? That will... That will, you know, kind of in a way show us what potentially can happen in the afternoon and evening hours. So we certainly need to see what happens. If there's not a lot, then you'll have a chance for some afternoon showers and storms to get going. And if I'm, if you read it, the Storm Prediction Center discussion, if that happens, then they think that maybe the afternoon thunderstorms would kind of overrule any kind of evening thunderstorms to get going. The way you get evening thunderstorms is if you do have more kind of cloudiness, convection, showers, and storms in this kind of circled area in the morning, then that means that it might take a little bit later into the evening, late afternoon, for any showers, storms to get going. If that happens, it could potentially latch on to a better low-level wind profile, that low-level jet we talk about. Then you might could have more so some supercell development, tornadic development. We'll see what go what what happens. It's it's kind of a tough one to explain and try to figure out but in general we're going to get strong to severe storms tomorrow regardless it's just trying to figure out the time of the day so storm prediction center for tomorrow a slight risk all the way you know from the texas mexico border all the way up into southern kansas 
and your highest tornado threat will be in this region right here and let's go on and zone into this region we'll get more detailed in a more uh, zoomed in region right here so this does include oklahoma city it does include uh, over to Tulsa, uh, you got a slight risk. This is all the way up just south of Wichita, but it does it does include uh, the Wellington area, Anthony. Um, let's see, make sure I don't, I'm trying to mention some cities on the fly here. Not quite the Dodge City. I would say that just southeast of Dodge City will be your uh, kind of the, uh, the highest severe weather threat. But this does include the Dallas-Fort Worth area. And Abilene down here to San Antonio, Austin, Texas, where you could get some big time storms down here. But I would say your tornado threat is a little bit further up here where it's closer to that surface low that will certainly get going up here further uh, to the northwest. And that is why you have now a 5% risk of a tornado. This morning we had the 2% risk. Now in the brown area we have the 5% risk of a tornado within 25 miles in any given location. This does include Woodward, Oklahoma. It does include, uh, what is that, Ceiling? I hope I said that right. It does include Elk City, Weatherford, um, Hobart. It does include you guys down into here so we watch this area and this is i think the highest tornado threat will be just west and northwest and north of the city of oklahoma city so you know you can't rule out a tornado though in areas of oklahoma city and tulsa where you do have the two percent risk hell risk it's in two isolated areas and, and they're a, a little bit of, of a question when the thunderstorm development will get going what we do know is down here in texas we have a ton of fuel to the air atmosphere so any storms that get going down here in texas uh, you have better what we call thermodynamics. Anytime I say thermodynamic, I mean your surface temperatures. That's temperatures that what it feels like when you step outside, wherever you are, that's your surface temperature at the surface. Anytime I say a loft, that means anywhere above your head, so up in the air. So great, you have higher surface temperatures, very warm temperatures is what I'm saying. Um, thermodynamics as far as dew points are higher. Uh, you know, that, which is basically the measure of humidity in the atmosphere. Your dew points, you got dew points in the 60s. That's certainly supportive of severe weather, especially when you get into the 70s. In response to those higher dew points, you get higher cape levels, which is an, also a thermodynamic, which is think of that as the available potential energy wise in the atmosphere for these thunderstorms. And that'll be the highest down here. But up here also, you will have an elevated uh, hail threat. So the yellow area is a 15% risk of one inch of diameter or larger hail. So anybody in this yellow area, that's what you got. But in the hatch region, which is the black outlined area with the checkered lines going in between, that is also a 10% risk of significant hail, which is considered two inch of diameter or larger. And you got down here just because of the reason I just said, higher thermodynamics. And you got it up here because you could get you got the dry line up here also, and you could have some organized clusters of supercells, and supercells tend to produce some pretty large hail. And you got the wind threat too, just a 15% risk in this huge slight risk area of winds pushing 50 knots or higher. That's 55 to 60 miles per hour. But we got to watch out for this tornado threat, guys. And a very broad look. I had this zoomed in, and I might still zoom in on it on the fly, but we're waking up tomorrow morning around 8 a.m. I know this says 9 a.m. right here, but this is 8 a.m., this is an Eastern time, so you back it up one hour for you folks in Central time. But you keep keep going. And here, here's the thing. You got morning convection right here. Anytime I say convection, that's shower, storms, rain. You got morning convection in and around just south of the Amarillo area, just north of Lubbock. You got morning convection here in Central Texas, Oklahoma. Where exactly will this be? You got a, a decaying mesoscale convective system in the region, but, you know, where will it be? Where will be the leftover cloudiness and the rain from this? And as we get into about 1 p.m., how much is the atmosphere recovering? If it recovers quickly, then you'll have more so afternoon severe weather. And I would say the tornado threat maybe won't be as high, but it takes a while to recover. Like, for example, you know, this is around 3 or 4 p.m. You still got little areas of showers and storms, but nothing too crazy. But then as you get into about the 4 p.m. time frame big thunderstorms starting to develop down here in southern and southwest texas any of these could produce hail you know down here i would say uh let's see san angelo watch out uh you know brady uh eden i can name junction 
Um, I can name a bunch of towns, little small communities down here, even Albaline. Watch out. But then we go to about 5 p.m., they become more widespread. You just got to watch out. Some of these could produce some very large hail. The tornado threat down here in Texas, though, in this region, not near as high down here. Just a big time large hail threat and also a damaging wind threat down here. Up here with these storms, you got to watch out for a tornado threat. It'll be kind of a surface low right into here. The L is where that low would be. And you have better kinematics. And when I say kinematics, think just think of that as better. Let's, let's try to explain this. And I always try to want to explain this the, the best way the audience can understand. Kinematics is basically the better winds aloft to produce damaging winds. And we certainly speak on it a lot for a tornado threat. So how fast... Or the winds going the higher up you get in the atmosphere and how much do they change directions and and the higher up you get in the atmosphere we call that directional sh shear or speed shear churning turning of the winds the higher up you get that's kinematics okay and we got and it's always the highest right near the surface low the best forcing is also the highest too so um you, you keep rolling here this is around 5 p.m you got some big time severe thunderstorms developing right here near lalton oklahoma weatherford and, uh, you know, Altus, uh, Hobart, uh, Mangum, Elk City. Watch out in these regions. If I mispronounce any of those cities, I do apologize. But, you you know, you certainly I got to get this off the screen. Here we go. That's why I don't use this as much. It's uh, very tedious. Um, but you keep rolling here. And, you know, there could be some big thunderstorms just south and just southwest of Oklahoma City. Watch out for these storms. I don't want to just ignore you folks in Kansas, but just south, southeast of Dodge City, Greensburg, kind of the Red Hills region, uh, Pratt, uh, and just south, I would say you have also one of your highest tornado threats right into here. Watch out for these storms right into here in southern Kansas. And then we keep it going, and this could develop into more of a cluster of storms. Look at this big old thunderstorm down here in southern uh, Texas showing up here. That could be producing some big-time hail downhill down here near um yeah <laughs> it cracks me up how you guys um uh i know some people you know when, when you say hell and hell like h-e-l-l -L, and then h-a-i-l i guess some people pronounce it differently but to me i pronounce it the exact same i'll be completely honest with you i didn't know there was a different way different way to pronounce the two i just say hell and hell so <laughs> Yeah, it's funny. I've had multiple comments that say they crack up every time I, I say hell and that it sounds like H-E-L-L hell, but um, I thought it was pronounced the same. Maybe it's not. You know, I'm not afraid to admit that maybe it's not, but 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 anyways, you know, don't we don't need to get off on a, a big old uproar about that, but I, I think that's funny how you guys get cracked up over that. You know, I have a little bit of an accent. I am from the South, guys, um, but <laughs> big time storm down here potentially producing that large hail and then we'll certainly watch for any of these storms you could watch you be careful with some storms later in the evening it's around 9 p.m also in kansas more elevated in nature up here uh, also uh, western iowa we keep this going and there could be a big cluster of storms that makes its way into eastern oklahoma arkansas southwest missouri into the overnight hours but they will certainly lose some steam but you could certainly still have a little steam so really what's going into this is, is, you know, we spent a lot of time on this last night. Not going to spend a ton of time on it tonight. But, you know, you got this is this is what we talk about with thermodynamics. Your surface uh, dues here. Come on, get in motion for me. Uh, but, you, you know, you take it all the way. All right. I guess she's just struggling. But you get into Thursday morning. You got dew points down here into the 60s. Big pool of surface, a very moist surface air down here. And you keep it going. There's a little bit of a lag going on with the graphics right now. I do apologize. But you get dew points all the way into the 60s, all the way into Oklahoma and southern Kansas. So you got the supportive, moist atmosphere for severe weather, which, I mean, that's easiest. That's more and more easier uh, to obtain this time of the year. I mean, we're in May. Um, human air is certainly not rare by any means. 
but uh, this gets pulled up due to the surface low and these little impulses, these little short wave pieces of energy that fires off the base of this trough to the west. So you got a big time moist air mass in response to the big time moist air mass. You got some higher cape levels that rise into the region. We'll get this in motion. There she goes. She's picking up some speed now. But you got cape levels, big time cape bomb down here in southern Texas. Plenty of fuel to the atmosphere. Cape values reaching well over 2,000 to 2,500 joules per kilogram. But look at this cape building into Oklahoma also. 1,500 to 2,500 joules per kilogram of cape. If you don't know what that means, that's pretty high. Um, anything over a thousand, I consider is certainly enough juice of the atmosphere to get some storms going. So we'll certainly watch. You'll definitely have some fuel up here all the way up close to the surface low. So you're definitely going to have enough fuel to the atmosphere for severe weather. One thing is this kind of <clears throat> wacky low level jet that gets going. It'll be pretty enhanced in the region right here in the panhandle of Texas and Oklahoma in the evening hours. I'm sorry, in the morning hours tomorrow, but it'll kind of diminish and then it'll kind of reamplify with the impulse of energy that's firing off the base of this trough, ejecting across the plains. And then you got to watch. You got that 30, 35, 40 knot low level jet in areas with storms in the region for tomorrow night. It really builds right after you have the peak of these supercells. So hopefully, the overlapping of the timing of this low level jet, favorable kinematics, and the explosive nature of these storms sometime late afternoon, evening, do not meet together. Because if they do, then we could have a risk of some tornadoes in Oklahoma and then also in southern Kansas. So we'll watch. Uh, could have some very gusty winds in Oklahoma overnight, tomorrow night, with the kind of strengthening of this low level jet. So some of these showers and storms. They kind of make this way into the early over, into the late overnight hours tomorrow night. Could certainly have some gusty winds with them with a strengthening low level jet in this region. But you know, getting into to, uh, getting into Friday, we will have a severe weather threat. Two little bimodal marginal risk, if you will. But right now, not not a whole lot to talk on with this. It's not a big deal. But we'll see if this uptrends. That's all I got. Thank y'all for tuning in. Uh, y'all guys stay safe out there and have a blessed night. Talk to you in the morning.